Hi guys, and welcome to another wonderful rock vlog. I told you that I would be back this week, and I am. And today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be vlogging about something that's a bit nerdy and close to my heart. Now, you guys, I hope, are probably aware of a game that's come out recently, it's called The Last of Us. And I want to be talking through what it is exactly that this fungus does, because I've heard a lot of YouTubers say, oh, why wouldn't the fungus just be better off? underground, where it's nice and damp and wet and underground and that kind of thing. Um, I totally agree, because we see that most funguses do live underground, because it's nice and dark, it's nice and damp, and it's where they can grow quickly and they can gain lots and lots of nutrients from detritus. The difference is, with this fungus, it's called cordyceps, also known as the zombie fungus. It specifically attacks caterpillars in Britain and other places, and it also attacks ants in tropical locations. When the cordyceps fungus is inhaled through any respiratory tract, what it does is it suppresses the immune system because of a chemical in it called cordyceptin. Cordyceptin is from the same family of chemicals such as cyclosporin A, B and C. Now cyclosporin A, B and C are immunosuppressants and if you have had an organ transplant at some point you'll be on some kind of cyclosporin-esque medication. So if you have had an organ transplant go and check the back of your packet and it'll say cyclosporin on the back which is one of the chemicals. Don't worry it's just a fungal thing that helps you fight off infection. Many other immunosuppressants exist, such as antihistamines and that kind of thing, and I think they also contain cyclosporin, but don't hold me to it because I'm not a biochemist. I'm just a little bit of a nerd, and I like to read a lot of stuff. Cordyceps would attack human beings for one specific reason, and that is to spread itself and to spread its healing around the world. Now, it normally attacks ants and other insects and other arthropods. It's a specific arthropodic parasite, which is what it is, it's a fungal parasite, it's a fungal infection, and what it does is it causes the ants and the other animals that it infects to completely change their behaviour, whereas normally they would be out working and walking around normally as everything is playing. Once it attacks the internal systems, it turns it into a zombie, and it makes it do what the fungus wants it to do. In the case of an ant, it will force it up high onto the top of an overhanging leaf that overhangs the net, where it will then form this jaw grip, which is called a death grip, where the jaw will lock in and hold onto the underside of the leaf, and the ant's legs will then push into the leaf before, in an alien-esque kind of way, the cordyceps fungal spore will then burst out of the back of the head of the ant and then begin to fruit and body and then finally the spores will be released over the rest of the colony. The colonies however have learned to detect when an ant has become zombied and will actually get the soldiers to pick it up and take it as far away from the colony as possible. However, this does sometimes lead to the soldiers themselves becoming infected with cordyceps simply through bodily fluids. Cordyceps, if it was to jump across to humans, which isn't entirely implausible, would then probably do the same things. It wouldn't specifically attack one area or another, but it would work on its advantages because humans have never come across this kind of zombie behaviour before. What cordyceps would do is it would probably start off in a rural area, somewhere far out where there's plenty of land and that kind of thing, plenty of moisture, plenty of everything else, and then eventually it would expand exponentially. It would force humans into contact with more and more humans and then it would be passed on through the basic bodily fluids, so blood, saliva, human, etc, 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 until finally it reached a certain point where the behaviours like we see from the runners from the game would occur. This is your zombie-esque type of thing where they run at you because you're moving and you're non-infected so we should bite and eat it kind of thing. So it makes sense that on that point. The next point that absolutely blows my mind and that I absolutely love the game developers for putting into it but I don't think would personally happen are the clickers. Yes, the fruiting body of the fungus would then probably burst out of everywhere that it could but I highly doubt unless it had been around for absolute yonks and decades and needed this specific reason to be able to see would it develop this frontal facial lobe at the front that the clickers have which echoes the sound backwards and forwards and allows them to see as such through sonar connections well through ultrasound and that kind of thing it probably wouldn't happen at most what i believe to happen from observing cordyceps in other in like arthropods and that kind of thing so your your ants and your insects 
is that a human will climb up to a high place, cling on to it for dear life and then die and the fungal spore would release and release more spores into the atmosphere and into the air until exponentially more and more humans would go along with it. However the game is set 20 years on from initial infection but even so the initial infection shows us with runners so that already indicates that possibly cordyceps has evolved beyond a point of it being non-lethal. The next thing I'd like to bring up with cordyceps is the basic behaviours of some of the more the bigger enemies. Now I didn't say before but this video is probably going to contain a few spoilers and the bloaters which are the bigger enemies that have been infected for much much longer have this ability to pull spore pods off of their own backs and hurl them at the player. Now I was talking with Magpie about it and we were talking about the basic behaviours that go along. Now why would it occur to that creature to pull spores off of itself to throw it? And I was thinking about it from the behaviour side because that's what I want to do is animal behaviour and through fungal behaviour and infection. If an infection has reached the brain, certain behaviours are controlled by the infection such as aggression and communication. So perhaps this bloater, this huge fungal spore mass has gained a perception that it's able to see infected and non-infected and it's able to choose between the two. Perhaps simply with this ability to choose between the two it's able to pick which is the primer target which is more likely to increase infection and increase infectivity because there can't be that many people left in the world anymore, surely. So this bloater that's been infected for so long is able to differentiate between simply because it's been around its own infected for so long or simply because it's lasted for so long and it's got a new type of vision recite or some kind of hive mind through the fungus. I mean this is just talking from sci-fi theoretically but the whole game itself is talking from sci-fi theoretically what if this fungus cordyceps was to jump across to humans. It's not very likely so don't get worried about a sudden apocalypse and we all become zombie people because we're not going to. Our bodies are very adept at fighting off hundreds and hundreds of different infections including fungal spores that we inhale every day without even realising it. There are like miniature cytofunguses that actually live in symbiotic relationships within our own systems and allow us to absorb more nutrients than we normally would be able to. It is seen throughout the entire populace. Don't quote me on it, I did read it in a scientific book that was like 20 years old, like when I was back in college, but from whatever it is, it's still an incredible thing to think about. Just this cordyceps fungus and the thing that it does. Anyway guys, I'm going to leave the nerd out here today and I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed this little rook talk about biology and about cordyceps. If you want to go and read up more about it, check out the links in the description. I'll get Ryan to put the links to Wikipedia pages and all kinds of other stuff. Also go and check out the game, The Last of Us. I would highly recommend uh, watching Mark a player play it or watching PewDiePie play it. PewDiePie did it in 16 episodes. Mark's still ongoing. I think he's at episode 8 now. Um, they're about an hour long, but they're definitely, definitely worth going and checking out. Also a massive shout out to somebody who asked me, and that is The Beast of Gaming. Go and check his stuff out, please, guys. That would be wonderful. And um, anyway, that's it for me. Um, remember to do all the good stuff like like and favourite and send us around to your friends. And if you are a new viewer and you want to see more wonderful vlogs like this, remember to drop me a comment and also to subscribe and join the mischief. And thank you very much. Bye, guys.